Hi folks, how do you know if somebody's a vegan? They'll force their way to the front of a crowd where a presidential candidate is speaking. They'll jump on the stage, grab a microphone, and tell you. That's a joke. It's based on the old joke, how do you know if somebody's a vegan, they'll tell you. Uh, and last night, apparently, when Joe Biden, uh, the presidential candidate, in case you're watching this in the future, and, and Joe Biden has faded from collective memory, I have no idea what's going to happen. Anyway, uh, he was making a speech, and a vegan activist group was there chanting something, and one of them jumped up on stage and tried to give their message into the microphone. Which made me think that maybe it's time I do a video about Buddhism and vegetarianism and veganism. I'm going to do this kind of off the top of my head. Sometimes when I do videos, I go through my books and through the internet and stuff and research the topic so I can be sure I'm not giving you wrong information. But I thought for this particular one, because it's kind of close to my heart, I will just speak off the top of my head and tell you my experience, which is I've been a vegetarian for slightly longer than I've been a Buddhist, or at least that I've been involved in Buddhism. So I became a vegetarian probably my first year at Kent State University. And before that, I was sort of a semi-vegetarian. I had a friend in high school at Wadsworth, Ohio, Scott Weinkoop, who was a vegetarian. And I'd never encountered a vegetarian before. And Scott and I were friends, and we talked about it. And I was like, oh, I had no idea what was in the Slim Jims that I love to eat and, and all these other things and how they were made and all that stuff. I'd never thought about it before. So sometime in high school, I decided I was going to be a vegetarian whenever I had my own choice about what to eat. And when, you know, my mom was cooking for me or something like that, I would just eat whatever she made. And I was a bit half-assed about that, but when I went to college, I decided to be full-assed about vegetarianism, and I was lucky that there was a Taco Bell in town, and you could get bean burritos for 50 cents. So I successfully converted to vegetarianism, and I've stuck with it ever since. Now, a lot of people think that Buddhists are vegetarians, but that's not the case. There is no sort of rule in Buddhism that you need to be a vegetarian. Uh, there is in certain forms of Hinduism, and I should make a little side note here that the word Hindu is kind of a misnomer. A lot of people who call themselves Hindu these days accept the term Hinduism, but Hindu is, is sort of a, a very big catch-all term for a lot of religions, some of which have barely any relation to each other. But certain forms of Hinduism, maybe most, maybe even all forms of Hinduism, have vegetarianism as a religious sort of rule. If you go to the Hare Krishna temples, they'll tell you all about that. Uh, I got an earful from them, uh, and I was already a vegetarian, so I didn't need it. But anyway, as for the Buddhists, though, the common practice in India in Buddha's day, and probably I assume to this day, was that religious people were generally vegetarians. So when people joined the Buddha's order, they expected that part of joining the Buddha's order in ancient India meant they were going to be vegetarians. But the Buddhists also lived by begging. So they would carry these bowls around and beg for food and whatever was put in the bowls was what they got to eat. And some of these newly minted Buddhist monks who may have been vegetarians before they became Buddhists asked the Buddha, what should we do if people put meat in our bowl? Because not everybody in India is a vegetarian. And the Buddha said that Unless you have reason to believe that the animal that you're being served, the meat of, was killed specifically for you to eat, then you should accept it. So I suppose that meant that if you thought the animal was killed specifically for you, you should refuse it. I, it's not really phrased that way, but it's said to accept it. Japanese Buddhists don't tend to be vegetarians. The standard for a temple is that temples and monasteries serve only vegetarian food, and this is called shojin ryori. And shojin ryori is actually, you can go to restaurants, there's one in downtown LA, or, or in little Tokyo anyway, that 
has uh, it's called shojin and serves shojin ryori. Ryori means cuisine, and shojin is is I'm not sure what that means. I'll look it up and maybe I'll put a, a link below that'll say what it is. But it's it's uh, based on temple food that that Buddhist monks would eat. But not all Buddhist temples are vegetarian, and this is something I found out early on in my practice with Nishijima Roshi. We would go every summer to have a retreat at this temple called Tokein in Shizuoka Prefecture, where Mount Fuji is. And the they'd serve like a bowl of food. They did food Oriyoki style. Maybe I'll do a whole video on Oriyoki, but you get three bowls and, and you just get what they give you. And the uh, one of the bowls always contained a sort of main dish. And I'd be eating these main dishes going, this tastes like there's some hamburger in here. And, and sure enough, there was hamburger in it. Now, they often would just uh, make uh, a kind of a sautéed vegetable stew, but they'd throw a little bit of hamburger and maybe some chicken or whatever in it, you know, whatever they had on hand. And that was what you got. And when I was with Nishijima Roshi, I just decided, well, I'll follow that, you know, early Buddhist way, and I'm just going to eat what I get served here, and, you know, I don't really like it, but it's fine. When Nishijima Roshi gave me the task of leading those retreats at Tokain, I actually, one of the first retreats that I was the leader of, I went into the kitchen, uh, actually I think I, I talked to them before the retreat, and said, look, could you just leave out the meat when we're on retreat? And they're like, okay, sure, and, and it was fine, and, and we had meatless retreats from then on. But it's not the, you know, it's not always the standard thing. At home, my guess would be that most Japanese Buddhist monks probably are omnivorous. You know, some of them might be vegetarians, but I, I would guess most of them just uh, eat whatever. I once had a conversation with Tim McCarthy, who was my first Buddhist teacher, about this, and he was what he liked to call a semi-vegetarian, which he would say was kind of a joke because being a semi-vegetarian is like being a celibate who sometimes has sex, you know, but uh, he did it for health reasons. He had some allergies and things, and uh, the only way he could get a balanced diet was to have some meat, although he would have preferred to be a vegetarian. That's what he told me. But he told me about conversations he would have with people about vegetarianism, and, and they'd say, well, a carrot is alive too. And Tim's answer to that, which I've been using ever since, is, I think, pretty brilliant. He says, well, yeah, a carrot is alive too, just like a cow. But if you say that there is no difference between the life of a cow and the life of a carrot, then you might as well say that there's no difference between the life of a human and the life of a cow. And we do make a distinction. So I think that is a reasonable distinction to make. Yes, if you're a vegetarian, you are still killing things to live. And even if you are a vegan, you are still killing things to live. There's all sorts of stuff that goes into food production, and you can't really help it, especially in today's mechanized world, unless you're just going to go out and grow your own food. But, but you're still pulling carrots out of the ground, pulling potatoes out of the ground. There's all sorts of things. There are people who try to get around that by being fruitarians, you know, so they'll only eat fruit that comes from a tree where the tree remains alive or the vine remains alive, the plant itself remains alive, and they eat just part of it. Uh, the, um, the Jains are sometimes into this sort of practice. Um, you can try your best to not cause harm, and I think that's what most vegetarianism is about. That's what I got into it for. I wasn't particularly interested in the health benefits of vegetarianism. As I said, you know, a lot of my early vegetarian meals were at Taco Bell, and then I discovered you could go to Burger King and they would, you know, make your order any way you please, so you could order a Whopper without the meat patty on it, so I used to do that a lot. So it wasn't really about health for me, it was about ethics. But... Uh, you can only take that so far. And there are levels of ethics, I think. And one of the levels of ethics is not being a jerk. 
uh, so the person who jumped on the stage with Joe Biden and these people that were chanting, they were being jerks. They were engaging in unethical behavior, if you ask me, in order to promote ethical behavior. And I am generally, in, in fact, maybe in almost every case, opposed to the idea of you do an unethical thing to make an ethical thing happen, because I think you're, you're getting into a very slippery ethical area if you do that. So I think the Buddhist idea of just accepting whatever food is offered to you is really the best way, and that's the best sort of example of how Buddhist philosophy views these things. It's unethical to kill a cow to eat it, they would probably tell you, but it's also unethical to refuse food that has been offered to you out of somebody's kindness. Now in my own case, I, I'm i pretty much, you know, I stick to the vegetarianism thing, and mostly it's out of habit these days because I feel like eating meat is a very gray area and the sort of ethical fervor I had when I first got into vegetarianism has pretty much gone away. But by now I haven't eaten meat in so long that the idea of eating a piece of meat is is pretty gross to me. Like, if you told a normal meat-eating person, like, here's this dead rat I found in the road, it doesn't have too much rot on it, <laughs> why don't you eat it? Uh, that's what I feel like if somebody offers me a burger, you know, I'm just like, I don't want to put that in my mouth, okay? I just really don't want to. So that's why I stick to vegetarianism, because I just can't, I can't deal with the idea, even, of, of eating a piece of meat. But... You know, my girlfriend's not a vegetarian, my family, none of them are vegetarians, my ne uh, niece was a vegetarian for a minute, but she gave it up, you know, so I'm often hanging around people who are not vegetarians. Before I moved to Japan, I was the kind of vegetarian who would be like, is this cooked in lard? You know, is there gelatin in this thing? You know, and, and uh, you know, getting really picky about the ingredients. When I got to Japan, with the language barrier and the cultural barrier and and all that stuff like that. I, I tried to do that at first, but I realized it was a losing battle, and I just decided that while I'm in Japan, as long as I don't see anything obviously that looks like a dead animal in the food, then I'm just going to be like, okay, you know, I'm not going to worry about the, you know, this the stray trace ingredients or the cooking oil or any of that. I'm just going to, you know, just accept it. And that's kind of how I am these days. I've thought about becoming a vegan, but I, I travel a lot and I realized that being a vegan would make me even more of a pain in the ass to my hosts than I already am. And a lot of these places where I go to speak, I'm not. I, they don't put me up in a hotel and, you know, let me do my own thing. I'm usually in somebody's house and uh, what they cook for dinner is what I get to eat. And so, you know, I try to be nice about it. And, and, uh, and if I was a vegan, it would just it would probably make some of these people's heads explode. So I just, I, okay, well, I'll just be vegetarian and that's enough for me. I also make a point of not really talking that much about my vegetarianism. I mean, I'm obviously doing it on this video because I thought it was an interesting topic. But I don't really make a point of it. Because in the line of work I do, there is a very good chance that that'll be mistaken for like, well, you got to be a vegetarian, and that's up to you. If you want to be a vegetarian or a vegan or whatever, that's your business. Nishijima Roshi, who was not a vegetarian, once had a discussion with me about this, because I was saying to him, well, should I give up being a vegetarian? Because I notice you're not, and it's not, you know... Uh... And he said, no, I think it's good uh, that you're a vegetarian, and I think you should stick with it. And I think it would be a better world if everyone was a vegetarian. <laughs> and yet, he never became a vegetarian. So, you know, take that as you will. There's also a story I once heard, I think, about Shunryu Suzuki, who was talking to a student about vegetarianism, and Suzuki, I believe, was not a vegetarian. He's the author of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, in case you don't know. And he said something like, if you eat a hamburger, then that cow can sit zazen with you in, in your stomach. 
Which I can understand where that idea is coming from, but I'm a little uh, iffy about that one. Anyway, that's my little rant about vegetarianism. If you would like to contribute to me being able to buy vegetarian food, you can drop me a, a, a donation at the links below to Patreon and PayPal. That is how I make my living. My birthday's tomorrow, so maybe, I don't know, if I'll do a birthday post or if I'll just take a break from doing posts on my birthday. But there, you know, just so you know, <laughs> birthday's coming up. Uh, that'll be... Interesting. 56 years old. Oh my god. I never thought I'd get that old. Anyway, that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good lunch. See you later. Bye.